All right, so this is something I drew up for my sister. We have a love of miniature Dotsons, and this, she named her, she adopted a miniature Dotson that they found basically wandering on the side of the road. They named her Minnie Mouse. So, for Christmas, I'm going to make this on the water jet. It's just a very simple. Uh, what I did is I took I took a uh, I took a Minnie Mouse image. Uh, I opened Adobe Illustrator and I used the trace function on Adobe Illustrator. Then I exported it as a DWG brought it into SolidWorks, cleaned it up, offset these, uh, the inside of the bow, I offset it a little bit so that I could get, uh, so I could cut the inside, otherwise it would have just cut the exterior and then the water jet would have tried to cut this, it would have followed the lines, it would have cut everything out. But these parts would not have shown. They would have just fallen inside, in, down into the water. So that's what I done did. Now, it's not symmetrical. It's not symmetrical on purpose. Um, there are places where symmetry is appropriate. I don't think this is one. I think the asymmetry gives it more character and more detail. So, while I'm recording this on OBS, the recording of the water jet cutting is going to come from my phone. So I'll have to I'll have to splice the two together somehow, probably using like Movie Maker or something. But yeah, that's what I'll be cutting here in a couple of minutes. All right, so here's the setup. We've got our water jet positioned at home. The uh, 7S, 7XSE intensifier puts out 60,000 PSI. I'm only going to be cutting this at about 20 to 25, which means I'm going to be cutting pretty slow. Be, uh, I'm cutting with a, an 80 grit garnet and that should be pretty good all right I'll uh, I'll take another video while it's cutting probably a couple more but maybe about midway then about three quarters of the way then another one I'll show you the final product
All right, so as you can see, that's a fail. That's a fail because it's not cutting out the center parts the way I want them to, to where they stay in place. Okay, so the reason I'm having this problem, when you, I'm cutting something with intricate detail, in order for it to cut and not throw back an error at me, I have to change it from the G-code uh, G41 to a G40, which means that it's not allowing for compensation for the thickness that it's cutting. Uh, how can I put that? The kerf. The kerf is how much material is removed when that nozzle is actually cutting. So if you imagine, if you imagine this, my finger is the nozzle and it's cutting this area that I removed the garnet from that's going to be material lost now the G41 what it does is it offsets the nozzle it offsets the nozzle to where right now it's following dead center the lines now depending on say if I have a box right here if I want it to be precisely the measurement what I would do is I would basically I'd program it to where the nozzle would follow the outside edge so instead of it following the line like this and removing this amount of material what it's gonna do is it's gonna come out probably about for this for this is probably about 40 thousandths it's going to come out 40 thousandths of an inch and instead it's going to cut over here so that I get precisely the measurement that I want. It's not doing that because it's every time I do a G41 in something this intricate and small it throws back a CRC error. So I changed the G41 to a G40, which means it's just gonna straight follow the line, follow this inside line. Now, the drawback to that is if you don't set it up, if you don't set up your drawing just right, you have stuff like this happen. What's happening is, yes, it's following the line, but the thickness between the two lines is so tiny that when it's cutting on this line here, it's actually blowing out the material in between. So I have to make this line thicker so that when it cuts over here, it leaves just, just a little bit amount of material here. That's the problem I'm having. That's what I've got to go deal with next on the computer. And give you another look at this. See, right here, right here should be a strip of material, right there to there, and it's not leaving anything. So, we'll go fix that up and try this again.
All right, that gets a bit loud. So here we are. Am I zoomed in or something? Oh, yeah, I am. Okay. There we go. All right, so. There you go. Now, to give you something to compare, let's see, what do I got? What do I got around here? Let's, see, okay, here. This little WD 40 straw. There you go. Give you a comparison. Now, after redrawing this, not really redrawing it, but after modifying it, I left probably about a sixteenth of an inch. That's uh. One zero six two five inches. Um, I don't know what that is to metric. There you go. Beautiful. Here's one of my other designs that's drying after getting painted. That is uh, three sixteenths, eight thirty six carbon steel. This is uh, twenty gauge, I think, or twelve gauge. I don't remember. Uh, but this is stainless. It's three hundred four stainless. So you can see, it's pretty thin. And there you go. That's my uh, Flow Robotics two of a kind. There was actually two of these made for Lockheed Martin way back in their uh, shit 2000s, I think. It's a uh, it's a custom build made by Flow International, but their robotics vision had to put it together because they didn't have the capacity. This cuts at uh, 60,000 PSI, like I said. The uh, intensifier is designed to hold four intensifiers uh, chained together, but we only have the one. It's too expensive for, for the other three. Uh, that's so that basically if one fails they have backups um, but yeah here you go it's a five axis water jet uh, I'm struggling with the five axis part of it I don't have a, I don't have the program so I actually do the five axis um, it does move in all five axes I can show that off here You can see the head turning. If I zoom in a little bit, maybe you can see it better. Steady the camera up against the computer. See, moving this direction, that direction. Then if I change to this. bit now you'll be able to see the the other function better to rotate for 
Running a water jet is dangerous work if you're not careful. The pressure coming out of this little bitty nozzle right here will quite easily sever your finger. Matter of fact, if you stay there long enough, it can it can cut an entire person in half. This thing can cut up to 24 inches thick. That's two feet, whatever that is in metric. I have no freaking clue. Yeah, there you go. My uh, my pet project. Over there on the other side of the water jet, you can see my uh, oxyfuel and plasma. I play around with that sometimes, but it doesn't have the precision that 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 this does. And that one, I pretty much already know everything there is to know about that one. I can run it like nobody's business. It's this thing that I need practice on. That's why I, one of the reasons why I'm doing this so that I can practice on it, get better with it, get to know the machine and make some cool stuff for my sister and my mom and yeah anybody else who wants to pay me like this yeah that's good cool all right well that's the end of this little show and tell we'll uh see you guys next time